everyone, and welcome aboard the Storybook Land Canal Boat. Thank you so much for joining us on our journey today. My name is TJ, and I'll be your captain and storyteller aboard the Merryweather as we visit the miniature dwellings of some of Walt Disney's most beloved storybook characters. Before we officially begin our journey, I must ask that you please remain seated at all times while keeping your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the boat, and please supervise small children as we do not want our story to be any unexpected turns. And with lightning speed, we're off. Most people travel to Enchanted World through the pages of a book, but for those who travel in person, whether down a rabbit hole or with the use of pixie dust, most find the experience to be magical, or sometimes even menacing. But don't worry, though we're passing through the jaws of Monstro the Whale, we're actually being transported to a magical place called Storybook Land. Now, if you folks think Monstro is terrifying, wait till you see what's coming up on your left. The cave of the big, bad wolf. He's always after those three little pigs who live just across the canal in their little houses. One of straw, one of sticks, and one of 100% wolf-proof bricks. Our story continues as we approach the quaint English village that's home to Alice from Alice in Wonderland. One golden afternoon, she chased a white rabbit down the rabbit hole. And as she fell down, down, down into Wonderland, she found her adventures getting curiouser and curiouser. On the right, we see London Park, where Peter Pan flew over with Wendy, John, and Michael Darling. They flew with the help of Tinkerbell's pixie dust on their way to Neverland, where they would never, ever have to grow up. Just ahead is the city of Agrabah a city of mystery and enchantment. This is where a street rat named Aladdin first saw Princess Jasmine in the marketplace and stole her heart. Through the power of love and the help of a genie, they were happily married and lived in the Sultan's palace on top of the hill. These magical places in storybook land are where love blooms, like the rose-covered archways above us. The same ones Aladdin and Jasmine soared over, sideways, and under on a magic carpet ride to a whole new world. Although all good stories are full of love and light, they also have their dark places too. Like the Cave of Wonders just ahead. If treasure bears a curse that can only be lifted by the genie of the land. Legend has it that whoever frees the genie will be granted three wishes. What would you wish for? Snow White would find a safe place to hide from the evil queen when she came upon the cozy forest cottage on our right. It's the home of the Seven Dwarves, who offered her shelter in return for her kindness. And, if you listen closely, you'll hear the Seven Dwarves as they dig, dig, dig in their mind the whole day through. And turning our page to the left, we can see the chateau where Cinderella wished to go to the ball. Her fairy godmother granted that wish, but when she didn't leave at midnight, her coach turned back into a pumpkin, and it's still there on the bridge today. While magic has its limits, thankfully, love does not. 
and Cinderella now lives with her Prince Charming in the castle high above. Some dream of happily ever after, while others dream of drifting off to sleep on hills of quilted flowers, like the ones on our left, inspired by the 1933 Silly Symphony cartoon, Lullaby Land. Magic is everywhere in Storybook Land, even in all the miniature plants and trees. They're all completely real and will never grow up thanks to the enchantment of Tinkerbell. That's a part of what made this place so special to master storyteller Walt Disney, and it continues to inspire new stories today. Further down the river is Toad Hall, the palatial home of J. Thaddeus Toad Esquire. Oh, sorry folks, it doesn't look like Mr. Toad is home today. He must have taken his motor car out on a wild ride to nowhere in particular. And just ahead is the newest addition to Storybook Land, the frozen little town of Arendelle, rising from the snow-covered mountains. Though Elsa fled to the Ice Palace, her sister Anna just couldn't let her go. That act of true love saved them both, showing them the family could weather even the harshest of snowstorms and let her once again ask, do you want to build a snowman? On the outskirts of Arendelle is Wandering Oaken's trading post and sauna. In the alpine village ahead, the woodcarver Geppetto wished upon a star for his puppet to become a real boy, and after Pinocchio saved him from Monstro, the blue fairy granted that wish and brought Pinocchio to life. Geppetto's wish was much like those made in so many fairy tales, like the one that inspired a mermaid named Ariel to follow Prince Eric to the castle on our right. She gave up her life under the sea to fulfill her dream of becoming part of our world. to leave behind her underwater home of Atlantica, ruled by her father King Triton, to marry Prince Eric and live happily ever after. Through the waterfall on the left is Ariel's undersea home where Sebastian, Flounder, and all the little merfolk live. Well folks, it looks like we're closing this chapter on our storybook magic. So as we return to the dock, please keep your arms, hands, and fingers inside the boat. And please remain seated until our boat has come to a full and complete stop. Once we've stopped, I'll count to three, and we'll all stand in the center of the boat together. Ready? One, two, three. Okay, thanks again, folks. It's been a pleasure having you here today. My name is TJ, and on behalf of all the other storytellers here, I hope everyone enjoyed their visit to Storybook Land, and that you'll come back to see us again real soon. Please watch your step as you disembark, and enjoy the rest of the magic in store for you here at Disneyland, the happiest place on Earth.